plants don't contain antioxidants, they contain pro-oxidants. And this is a fact. Now, it's called a hormetic response. So there are two different types of hormesis. Now, molecular is activated by the NRF2 pathway. Nuclear factor erythroid 2 related factor 2. I'm going to test you on that later. Slight elicitation of the NRF2 pathway is beneficial. The overexpression leads to the activation of NFKB, nuclear factor kappa B. So in essence, plants are medications. Carrots. How many of you guys eat carrots or have done? I used to eat carrots. What nutrient do we find in carrots? Vitamin A? NBC vitamin A? No vitamin A in a carrot. Carrots contain beta carotene. Beta carotene is a precursor that needs to be acted upon by an enzyme called BCMO in order to convert it into the active form of retinol. There is zero vitamin A found in a carrot. Now, interestingly, in order to convert that, we use T4. We use the T4 in order to convert this beta carotene into, into retinol. Interestingly, any retinol that it remains, which is reduced by over 20 times, by the way, is used then for the further conversion of the T4 into T3. So if you suffer with thyroid issues, beta carotene, cruciferous vegetables are not for you. Antioxidants, big buzzword. Plants don't contain antioxidants, they contain pro-oxidants. And this is a fact. Now, it's called a hormetic response. So there are two different types of hormesis. The, the theory behind this is that we elicit a stressor to the body and it leads to a positive result. Just like working out in the gym or cold water dipping, for example. But there are different types of hormetic responses, environmental and, and a molecular. Now, molecular is activated by the NRF2 pathway, nuclear factor erythroid 2 related factor 2. I'm going to test you on that later. Slight elicitation of the NRF2 pathway is beneficial. The overexpression leads to the activation of NFKB, nuclear factor kappa B. So in essence, plants are medications. We take medications when we're sick. We shouldn't take medications when we are well. We wouldn't take medication if we weren't sick. We need to, and I'm all for plants for medications. I believe that plants are medicines, but I also believe that that plant, that medication addresses that issue while we fix the root cause. And this is what we don't do today. We don't look at the root cause. It's medication for this. If I go to the doctor with a, I've hurt my thumb, they'll give me an anti-inflammatory. If, if it's a headache, it's a headache pill. If, it, if I'm depressed, it's an antidepressant. Not once does the doctor ask you what's caused it. Now, my thumb's hurting. Well, I've hit it with a hammer. The course of action, don't hit your thumb with a hammer. You take the anti-inflammatory, don't hit your thumb with a hammer. But we don't do this today. We just take medication after medication. The more medications we take, the more medications we need to take because of the side effects of these things. So I'm not against plants. I consumed plants for many, many years during my low-carb journey. And again, coming back to this list of, 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 of dietary choices, low-carb down to carnival, I believe that it should be a series of incremental changes. And there are benefits to doing this. We, we can't jump straight into carnival because we'll wipe out the gut microbiome. The polyphenols may be beneficial in the early stages, and we'll explain why later. But as we gravitate deeper down the journey, these plant compounds can be detrimental, and we'll explain why. But this NRF2 pathway is meant to be beneficial. Do you know what else activates the NRF2 pathway? Lead, mercury, arsenic, tobacco smoke, exhaust fumes. So if you were to go outside and suck on the tailpipe of a car, you would activate the same pathway as vegetables. How can one be beneficial when the other cannot? Now, what we see is this activation of NRF2, glutathione, the body's master antioxidant is elevated. This conjugates the toxin and removes it by glucuronic acid, glucuronidation. And this is why we think it's a antioxidant response because of the elevation of the glutathione. But it's come as a pro-oxidant effect. And this is a fact. Plants are not antioxidants, they are pro-oxidants. But they may elicit a positive response via the short activation of this pathway. If the activation and increase of glutathione is the goal, why not just become ketogenic? Ketones increase glutathione. It's the body's master antioxidant. Just become ketogenic. Spinach, packed with iron, except it's the wrong type. It's non-heme iron. The body needs heme iron. We can't access it. We need to convert this from its ferric state into its ferrous state, which involves high quantities of vitamin C. Now, the issue with spinach 
is that it's incredibly high in a compound called oxalate. And that's what it looks like, raphides and the light microscopy. These bind to calcium and cause issues in the kidney, in the breast, in the thyroid. These compounds can kill. Now, if we look at the volume of oxalate in these, they range from 600 up to, where are we, 1,700. Death has been recorded as little as 4,000 milligrams of oxalate. Packs of spinach in the UK come in 200 grams, which basically means one pack of spinach could potentially contain over 3,000 milligrams of oxalate. 15,000 milligrams is likely to kill any person. 15, 10 packs of spinach. You're not likely to consume 10 packs of spinach. And what people will argue, which I'm sure you're going to as we get into this when we get onto nuts and seeds, people will say that the poison is in the dose. Now, if I were to fill this with rat poison and give this to you, are you going to drink it? No. What if I reduce the rat poison to there? Not enough to kill you. I'm going to fill it with all of these vitamins and minerals. I'm going to add in stevia. This is the nicest drink you've ever tasted. This is your favorite drink, but it contains this much rat poison. It's not enough to kill you. Are you going to drink it? This is what we do every day when we consume these plant compounds. Just because it's not enough to kill us, it doesn't mean that the effects are not accumulative, and it doesn't mean that that damage isn't being caused. Kale also contains oxalate, was a staple of mine. When I was consuming these foods, I was the healthiest and fittest that I'd ever been, but I was healthier and fitter in spite of, and not because of. It's not because I was consuming the plant compounds, it's because I was ketogenic, I was low carb, I was consuming high quality animal proteins and natural fats, and the ketones are offset in these things. But kale contains flavonoids. Flavonoid is a compound that blocks the absorption of the vitamin C. So very little vitamin C is actually absorbed. And then we get on to soy products. 